Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Uncut the Feminine Podcast. I'm Juana and as usual I'll be your guest for the next 30 something minutes. Joanna, my colleague, is here with me and on today's episode we plan to give you a personal insight into the feminine, so stay tuned. For all of you listening for the first time, let me introduce myself. I'm the founder of TheFeminine.com, an online platform dedicated to women all over the world. Our mission statement revolves around a totally new and fresh paradigm of self-care, well-being and being feminine. At The Feminine, we believe that once acknowledged and included in our daily life, the feminine energy and its values can totally transform the way you live, the way you love, and the way you work. For the past 14 years, I've been a transformational coach, and I've dedicated the last seven years of my life to empowering women to trust their voice, follow their heart, and embrace their womanhood completely. The feminine is the embodiment of my work and its main focus and intention is to support women into acknowledging their true power, connecting with their authenticity and give a full expression of their gifts to the world. Each and every Tuesday we knock at the door of your personal inbox with stories, tips and tricks and also powerful practices meant to help you better understand who you are as a woman and also empower your feminine way of being and how you can offer that to the world. Since the first episode, we've been passing through some of the most meaningful chambers of an inner universe of a woman. And today we want to shift from theory to practice and we want to explore and discover how does it look like to be and live the feminine way. And we have a beautiful question from Charlotte. Uh, and Jana's gonna join in in the conversation. And Charlotte asked us some meaningful questions about how to anchor the feminine way of uh, being and living. Jana? Hello, Juana. I was laughing because I always have uh, problems with this hello. Our team always makes fun of the way I say hello <laughs> because it sounds strange. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm going to read Charlotte's question. Charlotte is a very darling friend of ours coming from Australia and she's always challenging us with very relevant questions. And this time she asks, You are giving all the time these marvelous tools throughout your workshops and in the weekly content too, but no real timing or instruction around when to put them into practice. This is fine because obviously a lot of tools are to be used intuitively or when particular situations arise, but I'd really love to hear from Juana, what does she do on a regular basis to keep her sensuality evoked? For example, do you set aside a certain amount of time each day for practices? What do you do when you wake up or when you go to bed? These are her questions, but answer into the flow <laughs> <laughs> because the flow is being feminine and it, it actually shifts from doing a specific set of practices in a rigid way and trying to tick all the boxes so that you can achieve being feminine to let go of the rigid way of structuring and just be in the flow uh, that's why you said that. When we were talking about Charlotte's question before the podcast, we were actually brainstorming on the difference between being feminine and what to do to be feminine. And it's a very important, subtle uh, angle to look at. And our work is about being feminine. And I, I'm going to specifically answer Charlotte's questions, but I wanted to create a bigger frame or a context in which those questions uh, should be answered because at the feminine we are very interested in shifting the way we perceive life not just what we do to empower the feminine um, and it's very much about the difference between masculine and feminine at the beginning as a way to compare them and as a way to bring forth the feminine because our western society is so embedded in the masculine perception and in the masculine way of achieving things that makes it very hard for us to imagine the feminine. And the feminine is about flow. So what I do in a day is relevant and not so relevant because what's important during a day for me 
is to allow space for my feminine or my sensuality or whatever type of feminine energy I want to cultivate. So first and foremost is where does my awareness and attention go during the day? And it goes into a balance between being feminine and being masculine because I'm not going to throw away my masculinity. I'm not going to throw away the structure or, you know, the steps that I need to take to perform or to achieve something. I need the logic. I need the brains. I need the structure. But I also need what's unstructured and we perceive as the feminine, which is emotions that usually don't have a structure or not so easily to be controlled, which is our humanity in general. So first and foremost, it's a balance for me that I want to experience every day. And unless I do that, I don't feel complete at the end of the day. So I'm making sure I'm taking time to be structured, but also fluid. And fluid means giving myself permission to be in my emotions with no absolute objective in mind. And that also is everywhere in my life. Like I take the time with my team in my office to make sure I bond on a human level. And I don't do that as a way to manipulate my employees or as a way to be a better boss. No, I actually do it because I need that. <laughs> I need to feel human while I perform. It's an inner need. So I'm taking the time to give that part of the interaction attention. Uh, as well with my lover or as well with myself. So I pay attention to my emotional flow and I, I take care of my emotional flow during the day. How do I do that? It's through the practices we've been talking about in our podcasts or webinars or workshops, through the breath, uh, through being quiet, uh, through working with my body, like really tuning in or tuning in into the moment, into the energy of the situation rather than try to push something just because I have an intention. And I, for me, it's very, for me, I think stepping into the feminine work was a life-changing, saving <laughs> solution because I am very structured and I am very masculine and I have a very fiery personality and I need things to get done. I, I love to perform. I am a high achiever and I get stressed if I don't perform. But it doesn't function for me to just perform. I need the other stuff too. And the other stuff are the feminine values like inclusiveness, humanity, compassion, understanding of what's really going on inside. So that's one thing is looking at the way of being while you're mapping a feminine lifestyle and then setting specific time during the day to attend to that. Because if you don't put it in your calendar, it will never happen. Okay, this makes sense. And to narrow it a bit even more down, I will come forward with an example. When I am very tired during a campaign or when we have something really important going on, and I'm telling you, when I know I'm just, I know I have to do that and to finish this until tomorrow, but I'm extremely tired. And I would like to offer an example, what do you tell me in this situation and what's your feedback? Because these kind of situations are relevant for everybody because everybody has a job where we have to perform and we get tired all the time. Okay, I consider myself lucky because I'm working with you who can not only coach me, but you have a very um, consistent perspective on the feminine way of coming with an answer or with a resolution to the problem. But let's reproduce that. Okay. <laughs> so you're tired. And yes, what I'm do very, I say? very what tired. What do I say to you, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> let's imagine now it's for the first time I'm telling you that I have a deadline tomorrow and I'm really, really tired. And what did you tell me to do knowing I have to finish the work for tomorrow? And not having time for it. Because that's... Having Always. the time, but I really have to gather my strength in the meantime. 
I don't say back down on your objective. I never say that. And you know me. <laughs> I yes, I know. Say, and I that's never why... give you excuse to not perform. <laughs> exactly. And that's why I come with this, uh, with this example, because uh, generally uh, I know what my friends react first time when I tell them how we do. Because they have this impression like doing things in the feminine way means like leaving the work undone or not finishing deadlines. Yeah, and being it's exactly just emotional the, like a Exactly. <laughs> it's not being emotional. It's just doing things in a different way. That's why I came forward yeah. with this example. Yeah, it's a good example. It's right. Well, I tell you to stop, first of all, and look at the, at the source of your tiredness because not, not all the time tiredness comes from physical activity. It can be an emotional resistance. It can be a block in creativity. It can be a fear of success or failure. Um, it can even be a shift in vibration or in your energy. Or it can be a lack of alignment between your physical body, physicality, your mental body and your emotional body. So it's just stop and reflect what's really going on and tuning in, as I was saying earlier. So I, I ask you to tune in and take your time to acknowledge your present current situation. Still keeping the intention, but giving space for whatever is happening in the moment, because in the moment you'll be connected to your rhythm, to your flow and to the actual process of creation you are undergoing. Yeah, we think of uh, achieving a deadline as an, a set of activities we do, but all the time, if we're feminine, we're giving birth. It's not just what we do on a superficial level, what people see us do. We're giving birth because the feminine is all about birth. So whenever you have a deadline, you're like carrying a baby, you know, in the, in the midst of labor and you're going through the motions of the labor. And it's, sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's um, tiring, sometimes it's emotional, sometimes it's anxiety. It's all everything. And actually being feminine means allowing this whole spectrum of emotions and sensations to flow through you. And whenever we hit that tiredness, we hit a rigid, tense part of ourselves, whether it's our body, our emotional uh, component or spiritual component. So it's just stop and reflect and then address it. Because overriding it, yes, you may think that if you override it and you put yourself in the adrenaline mode, will get you there. Sometimes it does, and sometimes you need to do it. But most of the time we do it because we don't know any other way of doing, of creating, of manifesting. And by slowing down and tuning in, something opens up. And what opens up is a more profound, more in-depth, more grounded way of looking at the whole situation and coping with your vital energy. It's like you're resetting your computer and you're starting fresh. And then you have a different quality of energy to perform until your deadline. So this is something I do also. I'm giving you that, but it's, uh, it's an inner practice that I... I um, I work with because I'm also a freak deadliner kind of a yes, woman. Yes, <laughs> we know that. But the best part in this is I know at the beginning from the very personal experience, I know it can sound abstract. I mean, what does she say? But simply taking three minutes and breathing and, you know, like I'm very skeptical and very resistant, but it really, really works. Even if you are not present at what I what I am really doing right now. You don't know when you're doing it for the first time. It feels like you don't understand, but you don't have to understand. And I can come with the very personal sharing an example that it really works. It's just take, taking three minutes and breathing and looking at the emotion, not at the deadline, just shifting perspective. It's really, really uh, changing everything. And I think we can extend the example, not only looking at the workflow or the professional life. Another example about how the feminine tunes you in with your body and can change everything in your life also comes from a personal uh, question. You know, when you met me, when we met, I was doing a lot of sports, running and going to the gym, the classical stuff. 
But after two years of working together and doing half of the practices <laughs> you're teaching, because I never do them full on, I noticed I don't enjoy doing the same thing anymore because I feel like instead of feeling refreshed after running seven kilometers, I feel more tired and I'm not happy with that. And at the beginning, I didn't understand what's going on because it's not I was out of shape. It's like something changed. I think we can include this shift in the conversation because it's very hands-on and probably many women don't go to the gym and feel guilty about not having fun yeah because tuning into the feminine energy requires a slower connection with your body and when you operate on cardio or hard work you operate eventually on adrenaline and that's a very masculine way of uh, being and feeling your body because it's all about high intensity mm -hmm. but with no ground yeah And the grounding part is very important, especially for us women. I think it's important for all people, including men. But for us women, it is essential. So we get more, more out of grounding ourselves in the earth, slowing down, tuning in, and becoming like a pillar of power rather than being in motion. Because the feminine principle is receiving. It's not actionable. The masculine is actionable. The masculine is in motion, in action, focusing on a result, achieving that result. That's the way of being of the masculine. The feminine is tuning in, harboring an intention, loving it, nurturing it, giving it birth through the slow connection and the tuning in. It's a different pattern and the feminine will always be connected to the process moment by moment as her access to achieving the result versus the masculine just goes for the result no matter what and i think this is a very very subtle but important difference and why you should do that is because why you should embrace or include feminine in your life is because you get burned out by just being masculine and it's a fact maybe you're you're at the beginning stage of performing in your life or in a specific set of projects but if you're a long runner and you're doing it for many years and you're a high achiever and you want to stay on top you know fatigue and you know burnout they're part of the game they're part of the game anyway because that's our culture but how do we cope with it and we cope with it by without fear, beyond fear, tuning into what we also need that is not about performing. It was my next question. How uh, do we get over feeling guilty? Because at the beginning, the first feeling is like you're feeling guilty because you're not pushing enough. You're just mm, slowing down and even taking a step back. How can we overcome the fear of slowing down? I don't think you can. I think you just have to risk it. I don't think it comes natural, and I don't think any mental inspirational code will help you with that. I think you just have to trust that you're setting up an intention for yourself to perform and changing the definition of performance by achieving the result and feeling grounded and wealthy in a way, yes, healthy at the end of the day. Because if you're burned out, you're not going to have any joy out of it. It's, you can't, you don't have energy for it. Even for joy, you have to have energy, you know? So if you, at the end of the objective, you're running out of energy, you're done. And you do not have the inspiration to move forward. And that's the whole process of burnout, depression, you know, and then anxiety, and it keeps in a roll. So we have to change. I think it's time for us to change and admit that this very driven adrenaline fatigue kind of movement and a definition of performance is running out of its success and that we also want to feel happy, balanced, at peace while we're having success. And I think we can have both of them, but we can't have both of them unless we acknowledge both of them as relevant. It has to come through a shift in awareness and a shift in values. I think it will be helpful if we bring into the conversation some of the uh, values of the feminine because you always say that the feminine creates 
the feminine embraces, the feminine is compassionate, how can bringing more awareness to these values in our life can actually change the dynamics we have with ourselves and with the people around us? Yeah, I'm going to move from a mental answer to a very specific uh, sharing of how I anchored or grounded myself in the feminine values because I think this question is very important for women because women will be the advocate of the feminine values and how we perceive a society the feminine values is still very abstract and it's still very not grounded and women will be the catalysts the facilitators and the pillars of bridging from abstract to real life For me, at the beginning, in accessing the feminine energy and the feminine universe and its paradigm, it had to do, like Charlotte was asking, so much about the practice. Because I couldn't trust the feminine. I didn't trust being soft. I didn't know if being soft will get me at the end of the day to the results I wanted. And I really feared if I let go of the controlled masculine, very high achieving, fiercey fire, that I will lose the results and I will not become even feminine. So I'll, I'll fail in everything. So I had to take the time during the day for, you know, when I started it, I was really insane. I was doing it for four hours or a row, like really relaxing, like understanding the concept of being relaxed, but not on a physical level, like go to to our massage, but really feeling every time there was a tension in my body or anxiety or anger, I would just slow down, breathe and take the time to really integrate and look at the source of that emotion or sensation. And in the feminine practices, we do have a lot of body work, like tuning into your body, waking up in the morning and caressing your body from head to toe, because your body needs caress. It doesn't need a sexual encounter. It needs a nurturing encounter. And you're the first and foremost important person to give that to your body every day. It needs during a week, two, three moments, whether in the morning or lunch or evening, where you just let go of everything and quiet your mind and really tune in in your emotional body whether it's through candles and bathtubs and, you know, soft music, or whether it's just playing in nature and going in nature, or whether it's creativity, whatever, painting, dancing, which is letting go of thinking and trying to manage everything. Or just sitting in darkness. It's very feminine. And when you really feel you want to take a break or a day off, you do it, which is insane in our culture. But it really works because it will give you a different rhythm of looking about it. And one of the things that I, I've learned through the practice, I wasn't aware of it on a mental level. I learned it through the practice is the moment I slow down, take the break and take a day off, although it's insane. And I really stay with the fatigue or the slowing down. That energy passes, passes off. And when it passes off, I feel spring in my body. And the immediate moment is to create something. I don't have to push myself into creation. It happens automatically. And that's one of the things that women will understand once they do the practice. They will feel that in their body and then they will trust that the feminine can empower their performance. You move. You are an inner being that's alive. You will go through phases of creation and one of the phases is slowing down and tuning in. But it's just a phase. You, you won't end up there. And it's different than being lazy. It's very different than being lazy. <laughs> or sick. Or sick. Because you're doing that with awareness. You're doing that including nurturing the body, your emotions, your soft side. And when that gets loved then it will empower the strong side to kick in. So when you say just stay in darkness, you really mean stay in darkness? Like Yeah, one of the practices I was doing because I was having so many workshops with hundreds of women and it was a lot of energy. And we would bring up a lot of energy because when women meet together, it's, it's like a nuclear bomb in the house. And uh, (laughs) we were in the sacred space of it. And I was so high, but high not from adrenaline, high from energy. 
and it was so hard for me to just you know de decouple myself from that energy and i would come home and just lay on a on the floor in the center of my living room in complete darkness and allow my body to fully melt into the floor until i was i was deleting it was like a de like a delete of all emotions all sensations all the energy and then i would just clear my body out of the adrenaline and really tuning in to what do i need how i felt about the event what what really triggered me what what did i create on a very deep level what do i need to say to myself to be complete so i can end this cycle of creation and move to sleep and then come back the next day in a different awareness and it was really helpful really really helpful i think this it's a question in fact can this be an answer to charlotte's questions what do you do before bed because it sounds relevant we all have uh, emotional baggage after a day at work or a day with our friends even if our friends they can put us a lot of luggage <laughs> emotional baggage and just before going to bed staying lying in darkness aware of what you're doing for half an hour or whatever even 10 minutes maybe can actually help you sleep better and rest better during the night totally and it will also align your inner universe inner process with whatever is going on outside and you may be aware that you have an inner process or you may not be especially if you are a mental person who has lived all her life in a very mental controlled environment but we all have an inner process and an inner universe especially us women and that inner universe is governed by our unconscious by our emotions by our subtle energies and when you bring rest and attention and sit with that part of yourself before you go to bed you transition into the realm of the unconscious and that transition is allowing you to become fluid and it's also bridging those two day and night because they're all governing energies day and night night is as important we work a lot in our sleep whether we are aware of it or not and the moment we we bridge that with awareness through a simple practice of just tuning in with your day and your emotions and what do you want to say to yourself And I would also end with acknowledging myself that I just lived through another day. <laughs> just gratitude is extremely important. And and loving yourself and embracing yourself, no one else will do it. And if you really do it, that's one of the things that I was like the surprises of the feminine for me is I really felt for uh, at the beginning of my practices and it was quite a long time i really felt the need to be free and not in a stable relationship so i was dating but i wasn't committing to anything and uh when i started the practices i was doing it like a single woman and i really was thinking oh my god like meeting a man for real and committing to that whole thing and how my lifestyle will look like because you know i kind of integrated the feminine practices and uh haven't met a feminine real grounded man <laughs> i i have met emotional men who think they're feminine but not really somebody who understands the feminine and i was like okay so how would that look like in a couple and it's it, i was shocked and it wasn't me it was the energy i was cultivating it in in the first stable relationship i was uh, i was surrendering to forced of course <laughs> by the universe <laughs> beyond my mind <laughs> um one night my partner said i think you need time to, with yourself and i'll prepare a bath for you i was in shock i did i really didn't know how to react to that it's like i think you need to you need i think i feel like you need to be with yourself so i'm gonna go prepare a bath and i'll leave you to your own energy and you let me know if you need me anymore and i was like oh my god <laughs> And it was really he was so in tune with me and really wanting to be with me it was my committed partnership 
that he f- was following the subtle energy of my uh, of my body and he was tuning into that and respecting that and i ended up in a bath with uh, fruits and champagne and candles and soft music and he said okay your uh, bath now is prepared i'll leave you to yourself and he walked away and i was like oh my god and oh my god like i wanted that but i was too afraid to say it <laughs> because you know i was i was afraid to give myself permission to say hey in this relationship you know i want time for myself and it's not that i don't like you or i don't love you it's just i i want to be with myself and second of all the way he put himself in service and really tap into that emotional need and physical need of my body and it was like oh my god this is actually working <laughs> <laughs> the dynamics change the um, dynamics change yeah i i remember now that you you came up with the example with the bus stop um uh, a darling friend of ours who attends uh, your workshop uh, shared one evening that uh, her husband was uh, in a business trip or something and she knew he was coming back home in the evening and he wa- she wanted to really surprise him with a very romantic uh, setup, dinner, bus stop, roses, the whole feminine shabam. And of course he, he came and um, he was extremely tired and he wasn't at all in the mood <laughs> for doing uh, her game. And she, 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 she confessed but she was so authentic because she said at the beginning I was so mad because I put so much effort in surprising him. But then I remembered uh, what you always tell us and I said but why why do I have to wait for him just do your stuff and I just went and uh, at alone and enjoyed the bath and it was even better <laughs> but she was so authentic and she was like ah uh, she had a great aha and it's it it, it it looks like this it does because men don't necessarily connect this way with themselves or with the relationship or with the woman that's our need of connection and if we can actually understand that difference then we can give it to ourselves whenever we feel the need and then he can offer it from time to time as a as a way of respecting and feeling and tuning in which is even much more uh, acknowledging yes because that's the distinction she she made she personally made it was i realized that it was me it was my need it wasn't my need to bond with him it was the need to bond with myself but that's how i was used to doing the things but um, another question uh speaking about this I, i'm sure that a lot of women who are listening to us are doing things for themselves they take time to go to massage they take care of themselves what do we have to add what's the add-on of the feminine that we can insert in what we are already doing to take care of ourselves to just move to the next level of self-care in the feminine way. Understanding that we're more than a body and that our body is energy and we need to tune in with the energy of our body and honor the process and the rhythm of the body because sometimes the body is tired and we disregard that. Sometimes the body is hot, fiery, full of passion, and we disregard that. Sometimes um, the body just wants to breathe. It wants nature, and we disregard that. And we associate most of the times this need with a man in our life who needs to give this, that, and, you know, or with the fact that we can't just go on a break because we're too tired or we have a deadline. So we always find an excuse. But the excuse comes because we know we're not in tune with the energy of our body. And we don't see it as a, as a feminine practice that, that is about taking care of ourselves. It's about self-care. So if we disconnect whoever we have or don't have in our life and we disconnect the pressure of achieving something and we just really tune into the energy of our body, then we will tap into what I call the inner rhythm. And Mother Nature is a very good uh, teacher of the inner rhythm through her seasons and her day and night cycles and everything. Like if you just go in nature but tune in with the energy of Mother Nature, 
you will see there's a lot of rhythm. There's a lot of vibing. There's a lot of movement. And it's, it's always in cycle. It's always in a spiral. And our body works the same way because it is made of the energy of the earth. So when we tap into our inner rhythm through mother nature or just tuning in, we are allowing ourselves to surrender to our feminine energy. And then the feminine energy becomes a guide. It literally becomes a guide. It talks to you through your intuition, through your emotions, through your sensations. And if you tune to, to them and listen to them and acknowledge them and do something about it, then that's just taking care of yourself on all levels, spiritual, energetic, emotional, physical. And it will refresh on your imagination, it will give you inspiration, and it will give you a vital energy that will make you perform sometimes triple than you've done so far. You know when I realized that a feminine energy is real talk? When I um, was having a conversation with my uh, acupuncture therapist, and I don't remember exactly the, the, the context of the conversation, but he came up with the sentence. I understood after 30 years of practice that if women uh, were to be for only one day in the body of a man, to realize the level of blockage we have between our brain and our uh, womb, they could not do it over they the would day. Die. <laughs> they would die. I mean, I, I realized by talking with so many women over my 30 years of practice that the connection is so strong between the body and the mind that you cannot treat one without looking at the other, which is not that strong. The connection is not that strong in men or is different. It's not that it's no connection, but it's a total different connection. So uh, medicine starts to acknowledge the feminine energy. So it's real talk. It's not just... A lifestyle it's more than lifestyle so do you think you have some more precise um, answers for Charlotte questions because I think we because she's very darling to us let's give her some specific, specific practices <laughs> that she can start with until the, she integrates more the, the feminine energy yes a very specific practice would be just to take five, ten minutes every morning or during the day and especially at evening to just tune in to your body and ask your body, how do you feel or how do I feel? And listen. And nothing may come at the beginning, but then your intuition will sharpen just through this practice and you will understand. And whatever the body says, caress it. Touch it. Touch it with gentleness and hug yourself. Like literally, hug yourself every day <laughs> and uh, use your senses throughout the day. Small things like really, you know, drinking in a coffee and deeply enjoying it or touching different textures, a tree, a bench, uh, something silky and really connected to the perception of that touch or smell something, or taste something, but take the time to be aware with it, like a celebration of that sense. It's a very small thing, but in time, it can become a very deep practice. That's one thing. So take your time. Uh, keep a journal of your emotions. And when you feel like crying, cry. <laughs> and give yourself permission to laugh. <laughs> And um, if you will tune in to your emotions during the day as a natural way of living life, you will cry and laugh more, which is very healthy. And I totally recommend it. And also enjoy crying. Yes, <laughs> enjoy. enjoy. Even if you're completely sad and totally disappointed, just go in there and be fully disappointed. Like live with totality all that life brings to you and start enjoying and appreciating life. You know, we try to collapse things. Oh, I can't be happy unless I have that, that. No, you can be happy and you will have what you will have and tomorrow it will be better. You know, like uncollapse your emotional way of living life to what you have. That's one thing. Um, do a feminine practice. We're here. We've 
you know, we have a lot of free content, whatever triggers you or inspires you, start doing it. Go barefooted in nature, hug a tree, uh, breathe with your warm. Just totally put your hands on the belly and breathe. Breathe five minutes every day with your warm. Something will shift eventually. That's a very junior stepping into the feminine lifestyle. A more advanced way of living feminine is living acknowledging the values and the principles. So allowing in your relationships, in your life, time and attention and respect for humanity, for your emotional side, for taking care of yourself and taking care of others on an emotional, spiritual level. Also including paradox, like understanding that life is bigger and the feminine also brings darkness as a value. It doesn't uh, look only at the pink fluffy side. It wants the dark, the blood, the pain. It's, she's not afraid of the pain. She with capital S. So by being a true powerful grounded woman, that requires you stepping into the pain. That's a very advanced practice. Because it can stretch in many areas, in many levels uh, of your spiritual journey. And bringing compassion requires you hugging yourself inside the pain. But having that fierceness of holding the truth, speaking the truth, bending your life to the truth, that's really advanced feminine practice. It's advanced and it doesn't come easy when you do it for the first time. But if you keep on doing it over and over again, it becomes a habit and it's like changes everything the relationship you have with yourself and with the people around you it's like turning 100 radical yes and one of the things i want to tell all women in the world is you're not alone we're here the sacred circle is now activated and it has been for a while and you don't have to step into that alone and you don't have to feel alone and you don't deserve to be alone and whether people in your life are there for you or not you have your sisters so give yourself and grant yourself the permission to step into the circle at whatever you know level that works for you so that you can receive, not just give. And balance that receiving and giving because that's also part of the feminine. Thank you, Juana. I think we can wrap this up because uh, some very strong subjects are popping up, but I think this can make the other episode for the feminine podcast. <laughs> Totally. I hope I answered Charlotte's question. <laughs> Thank you. And tuning in to our podcast, please give us questions, uh, challenges, stories of your amazing journey as women uh, throughout life. We're really wanting to voice women power into the world and we can be an avenue for that. So join us on our next episode. <laughs>